All right, so just before we get started in today's video, I have a question for everyone, and that is, do you guys think that this event, this normal and rare rarity festival should continue and keep going in Master Duel, or do you guys think it'd be healthy for the game to take a break, do some other events, do some stuff in the meantime, and then bring back this event in the future? Do I really like this event? I'm having a lot of fun. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Spanko, and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys Dynamist, my version and my build of Dynamist for the normal and rare rarity festival now i know this ends in a couple of days so by the time you guys are seeing this i hope you guys have a little bit of time at least to try this out for yourselves and this deck is pretty much just a control variant of dynamist you have a bunch of beefy monsters and you have a bunch of traps to protect those monsters and then you're pretty much good to go from there now if you guys want a full deck profile as always they're going to be at the end of the video after i show off some duels but this is the deck just a quick overview of how the deck looks for right now if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh master duel content I'm having so much fun with this event, I'm having so much fun with Master Duel in general, so I really do want to bring you guys more Master Duel content here and there, and I think this is the perfect deck to end off the normal and rare rarity festival because it is so fun, super consistent, and at the end of the day, Dynamis monsters are pretty cool. So that's enough talking, let's get into the duels. Okay, so one of the things I was going to say was this deck is really good going first and going second even though you're playing a lot of traps. Here, of course, when you win the coin toss, you always want to go first. You're playing a bunch of traps, right? But even though you are playing traps, it's good going second because at the end of the day, you are playing big, beefy pendulum monsters and that's really, really good. This is actually one of the best hands you can open if I'm being honest with you because you have charge, which is going to get you into any dynamis you're missing. Here we need... We both have a high scale and a low scale. Let's search another high high scale here let's search a six and then we can actually just set two and the reason for that is because we're playing a more control build here summoning our brachion with our scales right now doesn't really do much for us so i'm just going to keep these in my hand and the reason for that is because like i don't want to lose something stupid so i know we're not going to get otk'd or beat through a dynamis rush which is going to special summon one from our deck we also have torrential which is also really really powerful and so for that reason i think i'm just going to hold these and it doesn't really matter what he does because at the end of the day, once his turn is over, we have scales, we have a pendulum monster, we even have a dynamis rush, which is gonna summon and it's gonna get popped, but we can obviously pen summon it back later. I'm pretty sure dynamis charge will also get to add it back to our hand. So regardless of what the situation is, we're in a pretty good spot here. These can't be targeted, but that's fine because we have a bunch of big monsters and honestly, we could just Torrential at this point because that was his Pendulum Summon. And I don't know if he has a play after that. So I don't mind torrential in here because I'm pretty sure he needs the Magic Spectre cards on the field for his traps to work. It was oh. at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Oh, they can't be targeted or destroyed by card effects. I thought they just couldn't be targeted. That changes things. That changes things. But that's fine because here we're going to actually summon our Spinos. So even though we misplayed, we're still good. That was actually a pretty big misplay on our part. But you know what? I'm going to say we did it to free up our spell and trap card zones, okay? That's why we did it. A Sonic is what? He's going to double his attack? That's fine. I'll take I'll take the 100 damage. Regardless, he was going to die at the end phase. Charge is actually going to let us add it to back to our hand. And here's what I mean, where like you just survive one of your opponent's turns, even though, again, like I misplayed. But you just have to survive one of your opponent's turns. And now you see like I have a bunch of cards to get going. Now, I know he has a Tempest, but... And I don't know what this other set card is. I just know one's a Tempest. This is even better because we actually just have more monsters to OTK our opponent with. So Tempest actually would negate our summon. So we don't actually want a Pendulum summon here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set some scales. I'm going to see if there's anything he thinks is worth stopping before I pen summon. And what I mean by that is I'm just going to summon our Brachion here. And I'm going to wait to see if I can get rid of one of these traps. Specifically, the Tempest is what I'm worried about. I can also normal summon the Terran, so now we're doing all this before our Pendulum Summon, which is really strong. And yeah, so we're just going to go straight into battle here, get rid of these two. If he doesn't have a Battle Trap here, we're in a really good spot. Okay, so this Tornado, so Tribute is the Wind and then you banish a card. Okay, so sure, that's fine. This is why we play the Scales. This is why Dynamist is so crazy. None of these cards are targetable. Charge is going to add that right back to my hand. We're going to continue the attack. We're going to push for 2,000 here as well. Terran is actually going to get to search another card for us. Now, you guys might be thinking, Spanko, you could have OTK'd if, you know, you summoned all these monsters. Yes, but then we're playing into his back row, which obviously we don't want to play into his back row, right? But now that he can't use this because he has no wind attribute monsters, we can just pen scale this again. We can actually pendulum summon now because, again, that's why we saved our pendulum summon. So we can now pen summon two cards. And now he has to. I have to see if he can break our board with one card in hand 
We know this is a Tempest, and we know that's not going to be doing anything right now. Palacios also has a really cool effect where all my opponent's monsters lose 100 attack for each Dynamis card I control. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All of his monsters are going to be losing 700 attack. I have a big board right now. He's playing with two cards in hand. This is useless. There we go. Literally, as I was just about to say, there's no way he could play through it. So that's why Dynamis is really good. Now, yes, my bad. I did Torrential Tribute. I thought they could only not be targeted. Forgot that they couldn't be destroyed by card effect either. But regardless, even through the misplay, even through the misplay, you guys got to see how we can play and actually just win with Dynamis. So I'm going to get ready and get into the next duel. All right, so we ended up not winning the coin toss, but again, that's perfectly fine. doesn't matter if we go first or second. Here, actually, what would be really nice is if we opened like three to four of our Pendulum Monsters, maybe an MST, because this way we can get rid of any... Well, I just called that. Did I just not just call that? I said three to four Pendulum Monsters and MST, because now if he has back row, we can play through the back row, even though we already have protection, but we, of course, now can for sure play through any back row. We'll get rid of one of them. doesn't really matter. If he has two or he has three apparently that's perfectly fine four is a little bit more difficult to deal with i don't think that's a big issue to be honest with you we have a lot of cards here we of course also have our scales which is going to protect our monsters from our back row which is pretty important here so we pen scaled our three here we're going to pen scale our six and now we have protection we can pen summon three the thing is i am really worried four back row can be kind of scary so you know what i'm just going to blind mst like fully blind here don't know what we're hitting we're just gonna blind mst one of them we do have protection from our scales which is nice but of course hitting something like a battle trap would be very powerful here so maybe we hit something good oh we hit the book of moon yeah that's the book of moon that's pretty good actually i would say that's pretty good let's pendulum summon here and we'll just summon all three from our hand of course i'm not really worried about something like you know compulse or anything like that we do have protection of course so if you guys don't know all the scale threes have the same effect where if another dynamis card or cards you control will be destroyed by battle or card effect you can destroy this instead and all the six scales have the same effect where if they're going to target a dynamis monster you control you can pop the six scale instead so here we're protected from targeting, we're protected from destruction, so we're in a really, really good spot here. I think we're in a perfectly good spot. I don't think there's any back row that we need to worry about at this point. Of course, he might still be playing battle traps, but again, we do have protection from all the battle traps. What would make this board even better is if we had a card like Power Load on the field, because then he can't even activate anything when we do attack, which would even make us even more safe. But at the moment right now, we just have to attack, force out anything we can force out. All right, enemy control is not bad. Yeah, so he's just going to put it in defense. That's not a big problem. So he's going to stop one of our attacks. We can actually stop that, but I don't think I want to. Do I? You know what? I will. We will, we are going to stop that. Why are we going to stop that, you ask? Because we actually don't have anything big enough to get rid of the suprex otherwise. So actually, I think that is the better play to stop it. Okay, so he has the punishment here. Okay, so he can target one of our cards. Let's see what he sends to the graveyard from his extra deck here. But the nice thing is, even if he does do this, you guys have to keep in mind that he's using all of his resources now to break the board. Break, I should say, break the board. So that's why, I mean, like, this deck is still really powerful because even though, let's say he can stop the attack, we're not even looking to OTK him this turn anyways, right? But even though... He has to use all his resources essentially to just stop what I'm doing here. And yeah, we're pretty much in a good spot here because we have the Stegosaur. So, okay, we're not going to get popped and we're going to continue our attack and we're going to hit for 200 here, which is really nice. Now, if he wants to stop it with a third back row. Okay, so there you go. So now he, stopped, he has to use three back row essentially and he's top decking. He has no cards left in hand, by the way. He had to use three back row just for that. Here, we're just going to go Terran. And Terran, when he destroys a card by battle, is going to get us a search. So you guys can really see how powerful this deck really is and how far it can go. Now, I believe Brachion's a 6 scale, so let's search a 3 scale for next turn, just in case we need one of those. Let's search our... let's search another Stego. I think Stego's fine to search here. Now for next turn, we have a 3 scale and a 6 scale, which is really nice. And you know what? I think here we're just going to go into our end phase. It's not a big issue. We can, of course, pen summon one of these back later on. We have our scale set up for our next turn. He's top decking. I'm not very sure what the top deck can be that he's just going to win in the game here. Yeah, he can, I guess, crash if he wants to here and do 100 damage here. That's really all I see happening. Or he might just attack for 100 and pass. Which in that case, I don't even mind. Yeah, so here, actually, that's not even a big issue for us. I don't even mind that. If he crashes here, that's not a big issue either. But I don't think he's going to choose to crash here. Yeah, so he chose not to crash. He went straight into end phase. That's not a big issue for us. Now we're in a really good spot here. He has no back road to deal with it. Ooh, and we have the power load, which is going to give all our monsters an attack boost. 
which is actually very, very powerful for us because now we don't have to worry about the suplex being too big for us to handle. So here we're actually just going to scale our three and scale our six. Now you guys might be wondering, but you're only going to pen summon one. Yes, but that's still perfectly fine. We're going to clear his whole board here. I don't see any way for him to actually continue once we do clear his board. And we also set up protection again for potential like next turn, future turns, like something like that. So here we're actually going to summon our Ankylos. And the reason for that is because it's going to be big enough to actually out the Twist Cobra here. But on top of that, Ankylos has a really cool effect where any monster destroyed by battle, essentially by a Dynamis monster, is going to get banished instead. So here we're actually going to be banishing his cards, which means that he has no use. I don't know if rematch is a normal or rare card in this, but regardless, it's going to get banished. And we're going to get Terran to search for our next turn. Here we're actually going to probably search our Spinos because Spinos is going to help us OTK for later. And then we're going to get rid of his Twist Cobra. And there you go. That's exactly what I mean. Once you set up, once you start controlling, you, you saw he had to use three full back row. We MST the Paleo, sure. But other than the Paleo card, he, he had to use three back row, all the cards that he had available to him just to stop us from pretty much breaking his board. But at that point, it doesn't matter because we just pen summon again and we just set up again. So let me show you guys the deck here real quick so you guys can get a better look of how it looks like. And I'll go through it real quick. So here we're playing three Stegosaur, three Plesios, three Terran. We're playing two Ankylos only just because it's probably one of the worst ones. But we are playing three Brachion and three Ceratops as well as three Spinal. So pretty much maxing out on all of them except for Ankylos. We're just playing two of that one. Then we're playing two Power Load. Again, you guys saw how powerful Power Load can be because they can't actually activate anything in their battle phase. And on top of that, it makes all your monsters bigger, which means that it's going to make it very powerful for your opponents to one, attack into them, but two, it's going to make it really easy for you to break any monster boards your opponent has as well. So this is really powerful. Three charge, of course, searches you any scale that you need. Three MST. We're playing two torrential, three bottomless, two compulse, two dynamis rush, as well as three floodgate trap hole. These are really good ratios for the deck. I'm having a lot of fun with this deck. I think it's very, very powerful. Then for the extra deck, you don't go into it too often just because these cards on their own are so, so powerful. But just in case you do, you are playing the Barbaroid. If and only if you ever summon the Nova and they decide to destroy the Nova, then you can make the Barbaroid. You have the number 50. You have two Snowdust Giant. You have one number 52, one number 70, two number 61, one Shark Fortress, two Nova, two Pentastag. We're playing one track black as well as one agave dragon. So again, you don't really go into your extra deck at all, but there are situations where I guess you can go into something like a pentastag to help you do piercing, especially with the floodgate. It could be really good because you could win games just by floodgating an opponent's monster, having a defense. And then you have the pentastag, which is essentially going to give you piercing. And if you have a big monster like Spinos, that could be enough to win you the game, right? So that's why it's very, very powerful. But again, I think I'm loving this deck. I think these ratios are really, really good. You guys saw both duels. We never bricked. There's no real bricks in this deck because at the end of the day, when you're playing a pendulum deck, as long as you can get two scales, you're always going to have boards available to you, which is really good because you pretty much played the same amount of three scales and six scales in this deck. So because of that reason, you're also always going to have an equivalent number of scales in your hand for the most part, at least because we are playing only two Ankylos. So we're actually playing, I think, one more three scale. But regardless, it's essentially the same thing, right? So it's very, very powerful. Plus charge gets you to any scale that you need. So I'm loving this deck. I'm having a lot of fun. Make sure you guys subscribe if you guys haven't already. Like the video as well if you guys did enjoy. And I will say that if you guys really want to try something new out, try something Pendulum that is not super crazy combo, especially in this normal and rare festival. Very simplistic. It's a control deck. You push for a lot of damage. I think this is the way to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.